What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, accountants, coaches, create additional revenue streams, stop just trading time for dollars, We hold you accountable to achieve your biggest goals. And there is a step-by-step roadmap for this. You can go to rise25.com to learn more. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. Usually, Mike, I don't put in this last line, but you're a copywriter, so I have to put in like a call to action. I don't always do that, but I always say, make sure we have a three-word subject line and email template, which we use to get over 90% response rate. And this is like talking to the person. And so if you want that, just email support at rise25.com and we'll, we'll send that to you. All right. So today I'm very excited. We have Mike Pavlish and I'm really disappointed we haven't met before this moment. Uh, he's a top copywriter for nutritional supplements, health products, and information. Since 1988, his copywriting skills has helped us sell. I had to do a double take on this, Mike. $418 million worth of nutritional supplements and health products. And he's worked with Proactive, Jay Abraham, Gary Halbert, Campbell Soup, Phillips Publishing. And that's just a small, small bit of the many people he's worked with. And Mike, thanks for joining me. And the, the website is ProfitBoostersCopy.com. Thanks so much, My Mike. Pleasure. My pleasure, Jeremy. You're one of the best dressed person people i have on in a while so <laughs> <laughs> but, but like you said you don't know what i have on my bottom half exactly there's it no, is just skype there's no <laughs> telling i wanted to start with there's so many places we could start but um you know i want to get into a little bit of how you started in copywriting but what i found interesting is gary helbert told you to screw your wedding right he did why did he say that what was going on Okay, let's remember this now. This is in the late, let's see, this was in the late 70s, early 80s. He wanted me to come speak at a seminar he was having in Florida. And I was getting married like in a week or two. And he said, ah, forget that. This is more important. Screw your (laughs) wedding. (laughs) Your wife, I'm sure, loved Gary Helbert. Oh, when I told her about it, she's like. What would you say? She was all stressed out from preparing for the wedding, of course. So somehow she talked me in the, or she goes, she's like, man, I could use a break. I go, well, come on down to Florida. Lay oh, on nice. the beach. So she came with you. <laughs> so it was great. She relaxed for a few days before the wedding while I was speaking down there. And we had a lot of fun and then came back and had the wedding. So talk so about we, your experience there. What were you talking about at the time at the, okay. at the conference? That's Gary a high-level conference. Yeah, Gary had these very expensive seminars where he taught people how to do direct marketing, copywriting. And basically, he just wanted me to talk about the secrets of copywriting, uh, what worked best. Um, we had collaborated before and after that on copywriting projects, Uh had the same clients, competed against each other, were friendly competitors, and worked together on projects. Right. And um, he was a great guy, a lot of fun, a real character, and uh, a great talent. And uh, I learned a lot from him over the years. Unfortunately, I never had the opportunity to meet him, but I've talked to Bond Halberd and Doberman Dan and Sam Markowitz and Caleb O'Dowd and they've told me some crazy stories so yeah. I can't imagine uh, so at that conference that you spoke he wanted you to share secrets what was from the feedback from the audience what was blowing people's minds what was what stuck out to them on what you spoke about because some of the things you speak about probably are just normal to you right yeah so yeah. what to them was really impactful from what you spoke about? (sighs) 
Gary and I had both studied classic direct response copywriters, Claude Hopkins, Rosser Reeves. Um, and what had been burned into our brains was things that were not yet that common back then and still aren't to 99% yeah. of marketers that work really well. Things like if you can make a promotion, the more newsworthy you can make it, hmm. the more of a, a news angle or news story you can make it, the better, the more orders and sales it produces. Hmm. Because when people when people flip on the TV, they're looking for news, um, primarily, sometimes entertainment, but when they're reading the newspaper, they're, you buy the newspaper for the news. Right. Um, hmm. So genetically, we're wired to find out what's new. The right. word news, what's new, hmm. right? Right. So genetically, if, if we can tap into what's genetically already there, which is people want news, they want to find out what's new, what's better, uh, what's a novelty, uh, how have things improved? What? How can my life become better, uh, richer, healthier, uh, relieve my pain, improve my happiness, uh, make me more efficient? Um, then you're on your way to a, a home run in your marketing promotions. Hmm. Um, that's one of the things we were talking about back then. Um, we we're talking about the use of celebrities back then and how effective they could be in endorse it, endorsing, endorsing, um, like a social proof element, adding like a big social proof element to it. Yep. Yep. Even second, third rate celebrities were sometimes we're adding them to promotions and the response would yeah. you know, that literally double even more. What are some of those celebrities that you wouldn't have thought, like those second, you know, not like top, top, that right. produce huge amounts of results, but people think they need to go to the A-listers, and you're saying that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Who are yeah. some examples? Probably people have never heard of them, but name exactly. them, yeah, if you yeah, can I name I can't even remember the name of this one. <laughs> <laughs> he made me a fortune. His, he was on the show Dynasty, um, which was a, a hit. Uh, I never watched Tom it, but series. I've heard of it. Yeah, it was like Dallas with Jr. It was the, I don't know if it came before or after Dallas, but it was called Dynasty. It was with uh, Blake. Was the guy's name uh, William Devine? He now sells or advertises for the investments in gold and silver hmm. company. But uh, anyways, this guy I can't think of his name, but anyways, a good looking Hollywood actor, and that's basically what did it was his his looks were such that it would stop a camera like a Hollywood actor. And second of all, you could say that he had starred in the TV show dynasty. So the audience was primarily female. What type of product was it? This was for a weight loss supplement. Okay. So it's okay. a good looking guy. Good looking man. Okay. Right. And then you, then you tie that in with a very popular sh TV show to women that every woman knew about. And this was this guy maybe appeared in the show a couple of times or something, a few times. Oh, really? Yeah. So he was not expensive to hire. Uh, and that's that's a great example of something that had a huge you know return on investment. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So celebrities newsworthy. What else um, at the time? There most people aren't starting. I mean, most people aren't starting there, right? They may get to there eventually, but it's not like, oh, let's do something newsworthy and celebrity. They may start with like, how do you best write a, co a headline or something, you know? So, yeah, what else um, should people be thinking about on a higher level, like you're talking about? On a basic level or a no, high higher, higher level? Okay. Yeah. Um, not to be boring yeah. in their marketing. Um. You know, 98% of the marketing I see is boring. And 
most of us go most of us go through our days most of our days are boring the majority of our day is boring we do monotonous things and we have to do things that our bosses want us to do we have to fill out paperwork you know what i mean we're we craving fun uh, novelty excitement and yet then a marketer comes and wants us to read or watch something that's boring right we're just not going to do it right i mean that's probably bored. what's that- causing entrepreneur add also like the thing the systems and things that actually make things work <laughs> And they're like, I don't want to, that's boring. I want to do something else. And we don't fully go into that system. So, so how do you avoid being boring? Um, this could be a whole product in itself. So go ahead. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's where a master marketer comes in. He has to find something in, in the product where there's a story that, and has to, first of all, think about how do I, you, you got to think when you're marketing and creating your copy, what can I find in this copy? Or what can I add to it? What can I find and make a story out of? It mm-hmm. might not be anything, but you make a story out of it mm-hmm. that makes it exciting. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's just, you know, you're like, I'll give you an example um, of a very successful promotion I went, that I wrote for a blood sugar health supplement that went on to sell uh, over 30 million dollars in supplements and there was nothing inherently exciting about the product but i made it exciting by positioning it as there's a great blood sugar ripoff conspiracy going on now in that as soon as you have high blood sugar the medical establishment wants to put you on these like insulin other prescription things. drugs or insulin yeah. right and you know it's a ripoff and it's a conspiracy because there's things you can do before you get on prescription drugs which have serious side effects um, high cost and usually they want you to stay on them you know for a lifetime and it affects all kinds of systems in your body in a negative way. So I created something that was not boring, that was exciting, and it went on to, to make a, an otherwise dull product right. exciting and successful. Yeah. You're like so diabetes, blood sugar, it's not that exciting. Right. But when you talk about the conspiracies and other things, that kind of greases the wheels a bit. Or if you add a little celebrity, that makes it exciting, right? Or if you tell a story like I've told stories about, um, I've made a whole promotion start with a story of like uh, one promotion right now that's doing extremely well worldwide is about two young women that graduated from the same high school, but then 30 years later, one is the picture of health, but the other has almost every health problem in the world. And yet they both try to eat healthy and do eat healthy. They both exercise, but what's the difference, you know? And the answer is of course the whole story and gets into the product and everything. Yeah. If it's a client, we're going to put them on speakerphone and then show them. <laughs> <laughs> is that's, you know, I remember, um, like the Wall Street Journal one. Is that a similar type of story? Sure. The Wall Street Journal article where they had the two people. Um, is that kind of a similar? Um, it is. Kind of where they started off and they kind of take two separate paths. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Um, so what's so a lot of, a lot yeah, of storytelling is a great high level thing that most companies don't even think of doing. And, uh, you know, when you tell a story, Again, it gets into how we're genetically wired. When you tell a story, it bypasses the analytical, critical part of the brain. Right. And so, therefore, all the skepticism that you normally have when you read an advertising or marketing promotion is put aside. Mm. And the person just reads Marketing the story. trickery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so they read the story because they're interested in the story and it's a good story. And then before they know it, they're sold. 
Yeah. And their, their whole skepticism, their whole natural skepticism that would be there if you were trying to sell them in a classical way was never there to begin with. We don't use stories enough, Mike, to be honest with you. Like, I, I know the importance of stories, and I still don't do it enough. So thank you. Because it's hard. Thank it's you hard for the reminder on that. Yeah. Um, so you know, are, a, lot of, a lot of times the way to do that is yeah. you dig through the testimonials that a client has, or like, let's yeah. say I was yeah. selling something, a product that you had. I would go through your testimonials and find the most dramatic success stories, and then I would ask your permission to contact those people, and then... I would ferret out from them mm. the ones that had the best story that I could elaborate on. You'd really You'd dig into dig the details there. Because once you scratch below the surface, there's probably more to the story than we yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. Some that might seem good turn out not to be good, but some that seem just okay or pretty good turn out to be fantastic. Right. right. That's why I love what you're saying because that's what I do to prepare for this type of interview. I look at what, that's why I asked the Gary Halbert, like, screw your wedding, because I figured that'd be a cool story. You know what I mean? Um, like, someone's telling you, forget your wedding, <laughs> this is more important. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't hear that every day, right? Um, are there any particular books or things that you recommend? Like, I know, like, I'm always looking for resources like this. Like, I can remember Tell the Win and, and Made to Stick or two that, that stick out for me that, or talk about sto how the importance of stories. Is there any out there, or is it just from customer research um, that you'd recommend people look at or uh, dig into further? There's not. Or maybe there's a marketing book. I don't know that you love that that talks about the importance of this. Yeah, the the two best marketing books that I've recommended forever, ironically, both were written eighty years ago. Still it's works, fun. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Our Tested Advertising Methods by John Caples and uh, Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins. I would start anybody with those two. Uh, if it, if it, whether it's a beginner or it's the most sophisticated marketer in the world because mm -hmm. by reading or rereading those, you're, I don't care how good you are, you're going to pick up a lot of great ideas. Yeah. What stories stick out to you? Like, what are your favorites from the copy you've written since, I mean, the past couple decades? Um, what sticks out to you? Like, wow, like, I can't believe I uncovered this unique story that that's even, you know, uh, available or around. I should have taken some extra memory pills today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe think of, um, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. I was, uh, yeah. Was for, I wrote a, an online video sales letter selling a, uh, supplement that helped men ease their prostate problems. And I dug into some background research and one thing led to another and it led into this story where these two professors or doctors were fighting over this research and it turned that one of them discredited the other one. And mm. then one was one passed away and one estate sued the other estate. Really? Holy and, cow. Yeah. So I, you talk about a dramatic story. I mean, my story started with something like I had all kinds of very dramatic words in there, like, you know, um, it's about, you know, men can end their, or ease their prostate problems and how lies, betrayal, backstabbing, uh, false science, just all kinds of very emotional, exciting, a story. Yeah, uh, weaving the two, fun. weaving the feud in there. And the interesting part is probably eighty percent of the copy doesn't even talk about a prostate supplement. <laughs> it doesn't talk <laughs> about anything. It probably just talks about the two people's stories and feuding, right? That's right. That's cool. How did you That's find right. that? That was in the background research. Hmm. That's where almost all the stories come from in the background research. Right. Yeah. Do you have a yeah. process for like okay? We're gonna. We need you to do this prostate supplement. Like, do you go to certain 
journals or sites, or do you just Google it and see what happens from there? I have a half dozen sites I always go to. Then I Google it. And then I also have an outside researcher I hire. Hmm. So I use those three methods for research. Are they trained to see stories or are they just, do you focus them in on, here's what I'm looking for? Somewhat, but they kind of just kind of boil down research for me into what, what could be good usable research. Yeah. Yeah. So you made prostate sexy, right, with the feud. You made the blood sugar sexy. And I think in my research, you've done a bunch of like B vitamin stuff. How did you make that sexy? Um, I don't know if that would be a great example. No. That was kind of a differential, what I call a differential mailing. The one thing I want to tell, tell your listeners about yeah. is it's very important that whenever they're selling something that they differentiate their product from other products out there because mm -hmm. what happens in marketing no matter what you're selling when someone goes to your web page or your landing page or your direct mail piece or whatever however you're marketing it and they read it their first reaction when they see it they say oh this looks good or whatever but they're also thinking that a couple things in the back of their mind that you've got to play defense on. And defense is more defense is as important or more important in marketing than offense. Hmm. People are very time pressed and impatient. And if if they think they've seen that, if they think if your product is the same as other products they've already read about or seen or tried before, hmm. boom, they're gone. You know, hmm. they're they're you're done. Yeah. So this is really got, important. Yeah, you've got to differentiate it right up front in a powerful way. When they see your marketing, it has to be immediately evident that you're this is something different than, you know, the other hundred products right. that are selling whatever this your product is selling, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So it's very important to be different. Otherwise people are gonna think they've seen it before, they've heard it before, and they're gone. You lost them. You didn't make the sale. Or they've already tried it before. You know, let's say it's a, a, a supplement to ease uh, joint pain or arthritis pain. You know, if they say, oh, it has glucosamines. Uh, so like, I've tried that, it doesn't work. MSM, they say, oh, I've already tried that, I'm gone. Right. You know, but if you say, here's a new ingredient that's unique to our uh, joint pain supplement, and no one else has it, and it's right. new and proven, and this study, you know, then you can, because it's, it's different, then you've got a chance of getting them to read it. So what was different about the B, the B stuff? Uh, oh, you're going back to that one product. What was different about that was uh, I had found research. That also, said as a healthcare practitioner, I'm curious too. So, yeah. This goes back a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, and I want to say what I remember is that the two, two nutrients when taken together were much more effective. Hmm. But memory's a little shaky there. I'll, so I'll basically the gist is like most B, B vitamins or whatever have just B vitamins or whatever. And this had some other ingredient in there that which made it more effective when in combination when other ones didn't have that other ingredient in there. So yeah, it was well, a differentiator. Well, yeah, or maybe it was a technology that made it more absorbable into your bloodstream or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Any other examples of a differentiator with any of the um, nutritional supplements? Because I feel like it's hard to differentiate those sometimes. Well, it sure is. Yeah. I mean, that's that's why people pay a top <laughs> copy. <laughs> Lucky for me. Right. right. Uh, yeah, it really is. Um let me see a good example. Sometimes you do it with storytelling. Um, sometimes you do it with positioning. Like I said, positioning as the great blood sugar ripoff. Uh, sometimes you do it um, with, actually, sometimes you do it 
I actually, for a lot of clients, develop, help them develop their actual nutritional supplements mm. because we put in the supplements n- new ingredients that aren't in other supplements. You actually do the research, probably. Yeah, right. yeah. If they hire me to to develop supplements, because let's say let's say a company is selling a a pain relief a joint pain relief supplement. Everyone in the world has the same three or five ingredients in it, right? Yeah. Um, so if you just copy that and try to sell a supplement, you're not going to do very well. But if you can study the research and, and discover one or two nutrients that are proven in clinical studies, human double-blind clinical studies, to be effective for joint pain relief, right. and you can put those in your new supplement, now you have something that's superior to the competition that you can market and have a huge Grand Slam home run winner. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes your different differentiation is done Starts in the, the product, product yeah. development. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It's like, hey, Mike, good luck. Like this is we already got this. It much much better for them to come to you in the beginning and actually develop. Help like have a hand in developing it because then you can actually, those claims are backed by the research that you're doing. That makes sense. Do people ever do that with you? Like maybe they have a product and they realize, okay, this is your process and they go back and they formulate a new product or is that, uh, they just kind of usually stick with what they have at that point. I've had to turn down a lot of projects because Mm. The product was so meat. It was so, it was the same as everybody else's, number one. Yeah. So there was no way to market it superior. And they wouldn't let me use any, and I had ideas to market it differently with a story or some way to, to make it effective. Yeah. But they wouldn't, they didn't, you know, they wanted to stick with the same old boring poster board, you know, yellow pages type ad. And I just, I make my money on royalties from successful promotions. So you're like, that's not going to work. (laughs) Yeah, it was, it's, you know, it's, I didn't want to do it. What's the, I mean, I think, um, with, I want to go back to the Gary Halbert, um, when you talk, when you spoke and you talked about in the newsworthy. So, how do you make something newsworthy? What's an example of how someone can make something newsworthy for their product? Okay. One way that, well, we've talked about a, a couple ways that people kind of remember or go back and listen, but one way that people don't really, it's never discussed, but re, is you tie your product into the current, a current trend or what's in the news. Mm-hmm. Let me try to think of something here on the fly now. Um, let's say now, um, vegetarianism is popular, right? So let's say we have, uh, different protein drink shakes that may have certain kinds of protein in them that are non-vegetarian. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, it's not really a market I go after, but, you know, maybe yours is a non, is a vegetarian drink. So you're, you know, you promote it as this is a vegetarian protein drink Mm. because vegetarianism is a hot topic right Mm -hmm, now. mm -hmm. Or it could be maybe there's a lot of obviously political things going on right now. So maybe like if it's a prostate supplement or something that, you know, you're going to be cut off from your health care. I don't know, maybe something with health, like something like that. You can hook that in Would that something like that work or is that too, too much of a stretch? Yeah. That, that strikes me as too much of a stretch. Mm. Um, um, you know, one of the things uh, that's not talked about, that's kind of a, that people don't like to talk about, but I don't mind being politically right. incorrect is, uh, what we call the dark arts, which is, um, 
and any master copywriter uses it, whether mm -hmm. they'll talk about it or not, which is you use fear mm -hmm. um, in, in, in great, in any, any great sales person uses fear in one way or another. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're selling an IBM computer, uh, your fear in selling it to, you know, Amazon is if you don't buy my IBM computer for a hundred million dollars, you're going to be left behind because it doesn't, the other ones don't compute as fast and Walmart's going to beat you out. So, but if you're selling health supplements, the fear is if you don't buy this joint pain supplement, your joints may get worse. Hmm. And you may then need joint replacement surgery right? or the fear that you may say in your marketing, be careful. You know, you don't want to wind up prematurely in a nursing home. Right. There's you a know, lot of fear don't... in the health, in the health space. Yeah. 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 And, and people may say, Oh, that's terrible. How could you do that? It's not really terrible because number one, it's true. You know, the more preventative health care you right. do, right. First, you're helping the person. It's, it's a great thing. Uh, also it's very true. It will keep them from needing surgery out of a nursing home early. And, but it's just how the world works. I mean, it's how the masters sell and how companies are successful in a, in a free enterprise system, you know, the carrot and the stick, right? Right. Yeah. yeah the reward and the punishment. It just gets bad. People to are a lot more selling. motivated by pain than pleasure. You know, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I think that's the the title of your new book, Mike, is The Dark Arts. Does someone, <laughs> does someone have a book called that? That's a great title. Is there a book out there like that? I might get too many crazies. <laughs> I might get too many wackos out ben, there. I'm going to tell Ben Settle. He'll like that title. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not using it, I'm like, Ben, I have a good title for your next book. It's called The Dark Arts. Yeah. Um, so fear, what are, what's another dark art? Um, embarrassment. Don't be embarrassed. Mm. I'll give you full credit for Guilt. the title, by the way, when I, okay. when I give it away. Yeah. Guilt. Mm. Um, jealousy, anger. These are high. These are each a chapter of your book right now. Yeah. You just, we just outlined your book. Um, These are all high, very highly motivational mm. uh, emotions that we use, that the best copywriters in the world use in a very subtle way. You know, we don't we don't overdo it or, or step over the line. Yeah. These are real motivators, you know, Mike. And, and I want you to talk about the Barry Trim, right? Barry Trim was one of the most successful of all time, right? Because I could see, when, you know, these components and i don't know what the campaign was like but i could see these easily fitting into the barrier trim i don't know if they did or not but like people being embarrassing about embarrassed about their weight or whatever the case is like there's so many of these elements in there can you talk about berry trim what happened with that or some of the background what ended up what was the end result of the promotion and then some of the elements okay um client was Mark Kaplan. He came up with a diet supplement that had all these wonderful ingredients in it. And um, Gary Halbert wrote the first promotion for it. And then the response started to dwindle down because everyone had seen it. Um, then Mark hired me and I wrote, came up with a new headline, another copy for the piece. And the re response went up if memory serves like 32 percent or something like that maybe a little more i don't remember but so the response skyrocketed back up and i used a I, what i my secret to that was i used a news type headline it was something along the lines of u.s doctors discover how to overcome the body chemicals that keep you overweight something that was a very interesting, intriguing news headline that just pulled gray, mm -hmm, pulled mm -hmm. tons of sales. And it went on to do, I think, over $30 million in sales in, in quite a short period of time. Wow. So um, that was the, the short story on that. 
Hmm. So what was the offer? The them? offer was uh, you call or write in and you buy a one month supply of a weight loss supplement of pills for uh, $30 a month. Mm -hmm. And then when you called in, most calls came in through an 800 number. Of course, the operator would offer you a three month supply for a discount. And, you know, if you wanted, you could get a monthly shipment on your credit card for a special rate, and, you know, the standard upsells. Yeah. So they get discounts according to what they got, but it was for a one month supply for $30. Yes. Yeah. Um, what do you, what big mistakes people that do people make with something like that? Like if, if a non trained trained eye was looking at like the berry trim, what mistakes would, what would they have missed? Like, obviously, you know, people are looking at the headline, the offer. Um, what What's something that you did and Gary Halbert did that it's a subtlety of your experience that um, some marketers would have just skipped over because they didn't find it important or anything okay. stick out to you in that? Like what big mistakes people are making? Um, one thing that uh, all but the top companies don't do, and even sometimes they get to be so successful, they get bureaucratized, and if that's a word, they get so big and busy, they don't yeah. do it, is they don't test enough. Um, mm. One of the beauties of the internet, so what I do when, when I'm hired to write a promotion, before the client ever receives the copywriting from me, I've already tested for the client. They don't even know it. Hmm. Five or ten headlines using Google AdWords. Mm -hmm. But then I'm also giving them, I may say, okay, I've tested ten headlines. Here are the three best. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe test these because I only tested it on X, you know, thousands of impressions. You may want to test these in a bigger way, but most of us arbitrarily want to pick what headline we think is going to work. In other words, mm -hmm. if you think about it, every day, yeah. in every office, and every marketer's business, this scenario takes place. You get, you get an ad, and there's three headlines, and some lady or man says, let's go with this one. Right. <laughs> Why? You There's the a good, good comedy on that. Um, like um, Jim Gaffigan, I don't know if you like like comedy, but he talks about the Hot Pockets. And uh -huh. he's like, who came up with this Hot Pocket jingle? It's like the worst thing ever. It's just people sitting around a boardroom saying, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So you're, why you're your market? You know what your market? You think you know what, uh, what the man and woman that, earns you know either five times more than you or 20 percent of you in podunk iowa that's 20 years older than you really right. thinks about these headlines right that has a totally different health condition than you no you don't right. um not even the best copywriter or marketer in the world does that's why you have to test headlines right. Right. you have to test prices and whatnot and of course we have learned a lot of what you should test first what has the most effect on response but that's that's another discussion but don't arbitrarily if i could tell your listeners anything don't just arbitrarily yeah. think you're the smartest person in the world and just pick something and go with it it's so yeah. easy now and so cheap now to let your customers your prospects mm. tell you what's the best selling yeah what's going to put the most dollars in your pocket so be yeah. smart about it and, and, and do that. And that's how you're going to, you know, become wealthy in this business of direct response marketing. Yeah. Let the market tell you what it will spend money on. Yeah. yeah. Not, not you because you're not your market 99.9% .9 of the time. Yeah. I love that advice. You know, that's what I love about, I think direct response marketing is the foundation of pretty much everything because it's about coming up with something that, 
you test that actually people want and oftentimes you can do that before you waste a lot of time and money you know yeah um you also had um so the berry trim anything else on the berry trim that would be important to mention because that was one of the most successful um dietary products right Mm -hmm. i'd say we probably covered that pretty good okay the diabetes solution was another big one you want to talk about that okay yeah so what would be important to know about that and what worked or what didn't okay um the client the client for that is barton publishing um and barton publishing is one of the largest online marketers of uh, natural health information um brilliant marketers yeah i talked to joe barton like the other week and just super nice one of the nicest people ever and really really smart marketer yeah brilliant brilliant marketers great great people um and what uh what the key was there um i used that worked good they hired me for their uh, diabetes solution kit and it went on to sell mega millions and a huge success was I used the anti-establishment angle and the, they had an MD that uh, was a spokesperson for this health supplement, health product, natural health product. And my research told me that uh, people that had blood sugar problems and diabetes um, were frustrated with their doctor, their medical doctor. And yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> that, that, that fits a lot of categories. I think. <laughs> yeah. And Dr. Saunders also had this belief and he was, he was fed up with the medical system that he was a part of, but he actually now recommends a natural solutions that, he, he now sells, but so we went with this anti-establishment angle that you don't have to be a victim of the establishment. The establishment is just going to put you right on drugs and yeah. side effects and whatnot where, yeah. and there's a lot of natural solutions that are proven to work. And we use all the, you know, I used all the classic copywriting, you know, best copywriting examples. And, um, by positioning it where, the person had immediate empathy when they saw it, that this doctor would say, hey, look, there's, you know, you're not being treated right. You don't have to immediately go to drugs and, you know, start shooting up with insulin and, and yeah. do all this. There's another way. I've helped, yeah. I think it's helped yeah. over 25,000 people naturally yeah. avoid or get off insulin and, 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 and prescription drugs. So it was really good positioning. It came from the voice of the consumer and where they were at right now. You, you good copywriting. You want to meet the consumer, the, the the prospect, what they're thinking now. You know, in other words, ent- there's a saying: enter the prospect with the conversation that's going on in their head right now. Mm. And that's kind of what that did, I think, and just was a was a slam dunk, grand slam, home run winner. Yeah, it helps that um, you're talking about anti-establishment. You have someone who used to be in this establishment, right? Yeah. Right. So that's a huge credibility piece. Like, why would I believe you? But then you're like, well, no, I I was there on that in that world, and now I, you know, know that's not true type of thing. Because if you or I said that to him, it probably wouldn't be as believable as like an MD who helped people with diabetes. You know, like there's this one book that always sticks out to me. Um, you know, this, uh, how to raise your child in spite of your doctor. Right. And, uh, but it's written by a pediatrician who was a pediatrician for like 40 years or something. So obviously there's a huge credibility. It's sort of what you're saying. I didn't realize what it was at the time of why I'm like, Oh, this is really believable. It's the anti-establishment of, but he was in that world. So yeah, thanks for pointing that out. That's a good one. So I don't know if you were, you know, when you were, let's start here. When you were junior high, high school, right? What'd you want to be when you grew up? 
I say that because I'm sure you didn't say, I want to be a direct response copywriter. <laughs> so, what did you uh -oh. want to do? Uh oh, I did. You did? No way. I'd get, uh, what? I, I would get magazines like Popular Mechanics. I had no yeah. interest in the Popular Mechanics stuff. Yeah. Uh, I wonder how it first started. Maybe comic books, but there was ads in the back, like how to get space rich. Space ad mail. type of thing. Yeah, how yeah. to get rich in mail order. I was a kid entrepreneur. I was a kid. You were at fourteen. I had five paper routes, but I only did one of them. The other four, mm. I had other kids delivering papers for me, and I'd make two cents on every paper they delivered. So I was a little kid entrepreneur. But I, so great. I always was interested in money. So when I saw how to, I, I, I was. What the angle that brought me in was mail order, how to get rich in your own business or mail order. But I was born with the knack. I would read, my parents told me that I would rewrite ads from magazines when I was 13, 14, really? 15 years old. Wow. So I was just born with uh, that desire for some reason. That's amazing. It's the first time <laughs> I've ever heard that, actually. Yeah. Why couldn't it have been? <laughs> That's why great. couldn't it have been? Why couldn't I have been trying to come up with a solution to, for cancer or something, you know? <laughs> well, but the thing is, someone else is doing that, but someone else has to be sold for, on that solution. You know what I mean? Like, until they're sold on that solution for cancer or whatever it is, they're not buying it and they're not getting it. And that's why I think when I hear the dark arts, you know, when you <clears throat> believe in a product and the product is good and it works – Whatever way you can get, I mean, obviously ethical way to get someone to consume that product because it's going to help them is yeah. good. You know what I mean? That's right. So, so I do think there's a junction there. So, yeah, and there's so many great products out there that are marketed so poorly. It's a shame. So take me through your entrepreneurial journey then. So like you had paper routes. What was? Because right now you have probably other. I'm sure. Based off of this conversation, you have other endeavors besides just copywriting, right? Yeah, I, I've had, yeah, I've had businesses yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. So, what else uh, is interesting that besides the copywriting piece that you probably also do five other things? Uh, not right now. Not I've right now. You're businesses. focused. I've sold businesses. Oh, you sold them. I'm just, I'm just just doing copywriting for natural health products, and right now, what's been an interesting one in the past that you had? Um, I had a uh, natural health supplement business that I started, and we got it uh, was sold, and I got it sold in um, thirty six thousand stores, all the CVSs, all the oh. Walgreens, all the WalMarts. And when I look back on it, two things I remember: one was it gave me a heart attack, <laughs> honestly. Why? Because of the stress. What was stressful? It, it ramped up from zero to a huge seven-figure success, like uh, literally almost overnight. And I was juggling suppliers and chairs and ramping and financing and this and that and people and hiring and firing, and it was chaotic. And next thing you know, I'm getting a stent put in, you know, at the mm. Cleveland Clinic. Wow. From a heart attack, yeah. Really? Holy cow. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing I remember from that experience was I went down to Bentonville, Arkansas, where Walmart's headquarters are. <laughs> and I'm lucky enough, fortunate enough to be able to sell my product to Walmart in, in, in really? you know, Bentonville, Arkansas. Holy yeah. crap. I don't, I'll never forget that. It just, it's, you know, it's like a historic thing, you know. So that was fun. I don't know what you can say because probably the person you sold to, there's probably some non-disclosures or whatever, but can you say, I want to, I'm just curious of, cause you could have chosen any niche, any product, and you probably did a lot of research ahead of time. I'm curious of what you chose, whether you can say it or not, but the genre, um, as much as you can talk about why you chose it and what you ended up choosing. Yeah, it was a it was a natural. That pretty much all I could say was a natural health supplement. That it, doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that's about all I could say. I sold it to a company in California. That's all I can say. Can you say if it was targeting more men or women? Like I'm both. curious, both. 
So were you looking for something that was more mass market? Because obviously you could go on the prostate, right? Which is just men. Were you looking, what were you looking at? What were the criteria you were looking at? Or like anyone starting a, like a health supplement or maybe an info business. What were the criteria you were looking at to make sure that you obviously had the highest likelihood of success? That's a great question. I was just talking to somebody about that. Uh, there's, there's certain types of health products that seem to do better than others. And I'll name the top maybe five or seven. Then unfortunately I have to kind of run. No worries. Okay. Uh, the top product will we'll leave people hanging. So <laughs> they have to check out profit. <laughs> that, you know, and this has held pretty consistently now for, you know, 25 years. Um, these are this is for health supplements and and natural health um, publications, which you know are reports, newsletters, any information product or supplement. And the areas that I would start with if I was advising somebody are, and I'll just name them in no particular order. Yeah, would be joint pain. Mm-hmm. Um, blood sugar, vision, memory, memory loss, mm-hmm. um, I don't, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sure we have a lot of female listeners, I can't think of a more delicate word, uh, than potency. Male potency. Yeah, male potency. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty delicate. That's good, Mike. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could be a lot less delicate, right? <laughs> I'm sure you've written a lot less delicate. <laughs> right. Uh, so the, these I write, I've written, you know, tons of big winners in, 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 and there's, let me give you a few more here. Yeah. Joint plane, blood sugar, vision, memory loss, um, Uh, weight loss. Um, anti-aging, which I know it's general, but some of the products that fit under anti-aging are resveratrol, um, now you have the um, stem cell precursors. Mm. There's when 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 good clinical studies come out, maybe one new product a year or two that fit under anti aging. Those are always good. So let's see, I've given seven. Okay, so there's seven. Let me try to on this fly try to think of one or two more. I think there's a well. I know you've my research with you. Prostate's always good. I don't prostate, think we can have. Yeah. But that's that's for men only. Yeah. What about heart related stuff? Oh, there you go. That's that's a perennial winner all the time. Mike, heart- I, I I'm gonna stop you because I know you have to go and you're being generous with your time and uh if not, this would go on for five hours and we just would be talking about, I could go on for all day talking about your, um, your copy written stories and, and what the campaign. So I really, Mike, this has been awesome. I really appreciate it. Everyone should check out profitboosterscopy.com. Is there anywhere else we should send people online? No, just right there. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Check out a site. And if you have questions and you really, you know, Mike really only works with really high level companies. And I know that some of the stuff you talk about, people pay a lot of money to get in consulting. So I appreciate the information and the things you shared. This has been fantastic. Mike, hopefully we'll one day meet in person. And I want to, you know, thank you again. My pleasure, Jeremy. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire, came out back